All right, let's get started. This is what it looks like. You gently dip with the blades in the water. Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to what is the start of a learn the basic sculling drills series. With a couple of videos, I would like to show you what the basic drills are and most importantly, how to do these. There is no use doing a lot of drills if you don't know what to be careful about and what to lay your specific focus on. This is part number one and the exercise has a very difficult name to be sarcastic here and it's called dip, dip, dip. Joking aside, the dip, dip, dip exercise is super helpful because it teaches you how to place most of your body weight on your butt. This is where it belongs. <laughs> not on your oar handles. Most people go to the catch and are super stiff and the blade just skydives right at the point of time where it should approach the water and it doesn't. So you have to learn to get most of your body weight onto your seat to have a what I call spread the wings at the catch which means open your arms, be stable, not unstable and let the blades approach the water like an airplane that lands. And this is exactly what we're going to try to achieve today. And on a side note, one time doing these exercises will not get the job done. And if you find yourself in tricky waters like Ohio River, Mississippi River, um, other rivers like on the mainstream Danube in Europe, these are difficult water bodies to, to practice this on. And it's also dangerous. So make sure you have a safe and quiet place to yourself where no boat can hit you and where it can risk falling in the water. <laughs> Maybe try these exercises very close to a dock. All right, let's get started. This is what it looks like. You gently dip with the blades in the water. And you're gonna be careful that you don't get your blade deeper than the weight of the blade will do by itself. And you will see that we actually intentionally did not use Randall foils. If you have Randall foils, this is super easy because the Randall foils prevent you from going too deep. We wanted to show you how it works without Randall foils, so a more challenging way. And by the way, that boat is way too heavy for Alex. Alex is currently a member of the Austrian national team. He's a lightweight athlete, uh, 68 kilos, and he rows an 85 kilo Schellenbacher, Austrian single. Good boat. And here you can see how he dips just enough to make sure the blade does not go too deep into the water. So it's all about feeling how much weight does the blade naturally have in the water and you shouldn't go any deeper than that. Okay, that's important. So when Alex goes up and down, no deeper than absolutely required. The question is, how do you get there? How do you initially learn not to put any excessive weight onto your oar handles? And there's an exercise which is a bit tricky, but it's very important to understand. You go to half slide, three quarter slide or even full slide position. Half slide is easiest, three quarter slide, medium challenging, full slide, quite tricky. But of course, the trickier, the more effective it's gonna be. Maybe start out with half slide and then slowly advance to full slide. And what you do, and please carefully monitor Alex's hands. He does put his fingers off the oar handle. So if this is the oar handle, he actually puts the fingers away. Only rests a bit of his palm weight on the oar handle, not more. And this way, you loosen up that super tight grip you have. And if you're very unstable, you can try this even at the finish position. And this forces you to bring a lot of your body weight onto your seat. See how he does it? Gent exactly. This is how he gently opens the fingers. Not too much, not too quickly. Always stay connected to the oar handles. Don't let go, because if you let go, there's no control. You should have control all the time, but not excessive control. When Alex truly has a feeling for how high are the oar handles when the blades float in their natural position and you see his lift, so his, his starboard blade is in the perfect position right now, it's just below the water surface, just below the water surface, not any deeper than it has to be. See it is right there, it's just where it naturally will float. This is about as much force as you should apply at the catch, not more than that. And a lot of you are catching in a way where half of the oar is buried in the water. And the problem is that it takes forever to connect. Whenever the blade is moving up and down in the water, it means that it takes you more time before the blade sits still and you create that water bubble in front of the blade on which the blade can actually hold on to. 
and then stabilize itself. The idea of a stroke I have is the following one. Imagine you would sit reverse on a skateboard and you would grab with your hands the concrete, connect and then push off. Your hands would certainly not move over the concrete, they would rest fixed on the concrete. And although this is more difficult in the water, it still works if you do it the right way. Because water is a super lethargic element with a lot of inertia. If you can learn how to put very little body weight onto your oar handles, this is, this is how you feel where the blades naturally float. And then you do the dip, 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 dip until you feel, okay, I'm only getting the blade as deep as it will naturally float into the water, not anymore. And another thing you see, he only moves his forearm. He doesn't do the dip with his shoulder. This is something I see quite a lot. Let's play it once more. The dip, dip, dip is only with the forearm, maybe a bit with the elbow, but it's not with the trunk and it's not with the entire shoulder. So it's a very small motion. Yeah, that's already part of the next series. So let me recap what it looks like. You stand still, you go to a three-quarter full slide position and you do a gentle dip, mostly with the forearm. You have super light hands and the body doesn't move at all. This is very important because this is exactly what the catch position should be like. Will it be unstable? Of course. Will it be helpful? You bet. If that's helpful, please let me know. Support our work on Patreon. I put the link to the Patreon page just below. If you want to join the live indoor rowing sessions all right stroke rate 16 full scent please go to armtraining.com we do have live coached sessions with technique feedback every week all right and i'm looking forward to your feedback how do you think this session was was it helpful is it something you can work with and how do you do with the drills please keep me updated in the arm training facebook group and in the comments below all the best to you i'm looking forward to see you soon bye bye